We got blowback from a yingling presidential endorsement, a self-driving beer truck, plus terrapin and the battery in Atlanta. <laughs> Happy Halloween. I am your host, Chris Hardy, and this is the Straight Beer News for the week ending October 30th, 2016. So how can I start with any other news story than the one that's really hit the internet hard the last couple of days? This is the boycott of Yingling Beer. It started a couple of days ago with a tour that was given of the brewery to the son of Donald Trump, Eric Trump. During this tour, the Donald Trump and the owner of Yingling Brewery, um, whose name is Dick Yingling Jr. He is the fifth generation owner of the brewery, so it's a family brewery and it's been handed down generation to generation. And now Dick Jr. Um, was on this providing a tour of the brewery to Eric Trump. And during the said tour, they were discussing a lot about business and um, legislation and how it can hinder um, business progress. And at the end of it, there was a, a brief discussion. And this was all um, free to the media, so there were media on site. At the end, Dick Yingling endorsed presidential candidate Donald Trump. And his words precisely were, our guys are behind your father. We need him in there. No sooner had these words been spoken than they were on the internet. And no sooner were they on the internet than there was a blowback. So as far as I can tell, the start of this boycott comes from Brian Sims, who is a state representative from the state of Pennsylvania. And he got to Twitter and tagged numerous bars that he knows in the state of Pennsylvania that are gay-friendly, himself being a gay man. And essentially on his Twitter rant said, you know, Yingling is for Trump, and Trump and Mike Pence are anti-women, they're anti-gay, and all these other things, and if they're not going to be for us, then they're against us, and we're going to put our money where our mouths are, and we can support um, other breweries who are pro-liberal uh, or who are pro our ideologies. And so that started off this big snowball effect where um, over the course of a couple of days, uh, numerous bars came out, both from the uh, Pennsylvania area as well as D.C., uh, that were saying, we are we are gay-friendly, and we know that this bar, this brewery, doesn't support our agenda and our ideals, so therefore we're no longer selling their beer and taking tap handles off or refusing to, uh, to sell the, the beer any longer. Next up, we have a driverless commercial truck delivery of beer. And this happened earlier this week in Colorado, where a, an Uber truck, well actually it's an auto truck, so auto is a branch of Uber, which was started uh, about a year or so ago with many Google executives uh, who started it and um, became a part of the Uber company um, just recently, earlier this summer. And what they do is they work on autonomous driving or driverless cars, and they apply this technology to a commercial truck that was going to head from Fort Collins to Colorado Springs in Colorado. And they were looking to deliver a big shipment of beer, 2,000 cases to be exact. Now it did make the trip, it was 120 miles on I-25 from Fort Collins through the busy um, metropolis uh, center of Denver on its way to Colorado Springs. And it did have a driver aboard and he navigated the, the truck onto the um, initially and then pushed a, a button to engage the, the driverless portion of it and it coasted down the freeway um, amongst other cars on the road uh, for that 120 mile period. The beer on board was Budweiser, so ABN Bev was behind this first ever driverless commercial truck delivery of beer. In a statement to the media, a senior director for ABN Bev stated that they view this as the future of commercial trucking. They see technology heading in this direction and that they want to be a part of it. Now there's a little bit of controversy behind that statement uh, as of course it would involve truckers and their jobs if the industry were to go completely driverless. So there's some thought that there may be some, as of, well, as of now, let's be straight, there, there isn't a need for a driver to be there and uh, to help guide it onto free or this, for, not for the moment, this is just primarily uh, freeway or interstate driving is relatively straight and you can avoid more or less the, the hazards of street driving with stoplights and pedestrians and uh, other things of that nature. However, there is, it does seem that the, the industry of uh, automobiles is heading in that direction towards more autonomous vehicles. And it'll be interesting to see where we go. There could be maybe some hybrid of driverless trucks on the expressways, but maybe once it gets to a certain depot, the city 
it's probably going to take a number of years for this to get um, fully into gear and fully caught on, but um, let's see where this goes. At least the first commercial delivery we can say was beer. Lastly, a baseball-related story. We can still talk baseball, right? I mean, the World Series is still on, so technically it's still baseball season. So anyway, Terrapin. Terrapin is, a, is based in Athens, Georgia, and they are known all around the South as their, their primary market, and they're known mostly for their IPA called Hopsecutioner. It was announced this week that they are partnering with the Atlanta Braves. So if you're not aware, the Atlanta Braves are building a new stadium that will be set to be open next year called SunTrust Park. And as part of the, the building of the stadium, there is a greater building going on in that neighborhood called uh, the Battery. And Terrapin is planning to build two facilities within this battery, with the Battery being a multi-use uh, development for you know, shopping and lofts and all things of that nature. The first of them is going to be called the Terrapin Tap Room. And this is going to be a tap room plus restaurant that will accommodate people who are maybe on their way to the game. It's going to be situated right outside of right field, so outside of the stadium, but right near the, the right field entrance. Uh, so I expect it will be a, a busy place to go before a game or even spend the time in the evening after a game. The restaurant will feature barbecue style food um, put on by Fox Brothers Barbecue. The second location, which is either next door or adjacent or somewhere in that same vicinity, is going to be a place called ATL Brewland. And this is going to be a location for Terrapin to do more experimental beers, do things that are more collaborative with other breweries. I even saw mention that they're hoping to do a collaboration with former Braves stars. So I think that would be kind of interesting to kind of bring the, the, the baseball um, feature into the, the brewery. That may be kind of neat. Uh, turn, on, turn on some of the, uh, the potential patrons that will be coming for a beer. So that will do it for me this week, guys. I appreciate you watching. Have a great week. Remember, if you like what I'm doing, give me a thumbs up, or you can always click and subscribe to me. I do this every week, and I look forward to hearing feedback from you. So if you are so inclined, you can also leave a comment in the comment section below, or you can reach me out on the social media. I'm on Twitter. You can find me at straight beer. I'm also on Instagram where I post many pictures of beer related events or beer that I'm drinking at the moment and you'll find me on Instagram also likely likewise on untapped if you want to see what I'm checking in or what badges I have or if you want to be a friend and be social there I'm there as well I look forward to communicating to you through those media channels well that'll be it thank you for watching have a great week take care